This is Mrs. Goddard, you can hear us? Yes, I can oh, finally wonderful. hear everybody and I can <laughs> see you, James, and I can see uh, Varun and Avik, they've taken their seats next to the screen. And perhaps we're all set to go now. <laughs> This is great. This is great. And uh, and at that time, um, you know, the standard struggles of economics they moved away, uh, they emigrated for the economic betterment. And because of that emigration, because of the lack of their resources, they were distant from their parents, from my grandmother. And so their focus was really just us. And uh, I had a luxury you know, because we grew up with much more than when my father got sick and he eventually passed to be a big boy. What we just at home with us. So we were caring for him while we were caring for the kids. So we were, and even now, with my mother on the other side and my in laws on the other side, we're constantly going back and forth. There's a conversation we need to talk to this and the son and the hand off and bar. There's a conversation we need to have. Um, what's this going to be like for our kids? Are we going to be one part of the bread for them when they grow up? Uh, I know that some of my uh, some of my peers talk about the fact that you know we're going to say I don't want to I don't want them to be burdened. I'm going to set everything up so that they're completely free. I personally have a completely different point of view. I told them I'm moving, so I you know I said you saw how we treated our parents. You better get ready to treat me exactly the same way, maybe slightly better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but this is actually an interesting you know moment in you know as we're one of the first most affluent generation to have given the responsibility or opportunity to have to care on both sides. Uh, and even think about the idea that we don't necessarily have to pass that responsibility to our kids. It's pretty interesting. Uh, but this is an evolving moment, brand new. So let me hand it over. Thank you, James. I'll just uh, think through. But first of all, when, when I got the when I got the email that I had to speak on sandwich generation, my first thought was oh, I'm nowhere near as old to be. <laughs> so, is this what I Speakers are far away. Not connected. No, no, it is. The speakers are far away. <laughs> Just give me a second. Yeah. 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 The bike is not working. Yeah. 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 Oh, we can hear you. She was here. She was. Uh... So that's the microphone. Can you hear me now? What? Yeah. And 
जेम्स फ्रेंड्स who say they don't want to burden burden their children uh with uh the idea of taking care of both sides that they don't have to go through what they've been through so and i look up we are targeting the sandwich generation we by pr- providing a solution that uh you don't have to depend on your children and you can live uh, independently i also have uh, two three other sort of my opinion on how uh human beings uh, behave like i believe we are biologically wired to take care of our children but we have to be culturally conditioned to take care of our parents uh we don't have an emotional uh wiring which says we are responsible for them it's uh, that's 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 one of those things and uh, uh and when we were talking about this abhik said like how his mother is fiercely independent and i think all of us are fiercely independent even though james says that he is moving into his children's home uh i i think it's very very different uh to live with your children in your house as compared to living with uh the, your children in their house it's a very sort of a different uh emotional perspective and uh, and i think that's where sort of affluence comes in i think uh, and why we are targeting the sandwich generation i think one of the things that is happening in society today is we are having the first sort of generation which has financial savings to say i can live independently like uh, you know my grandparents did not have a choice they had to live with my parents because there was no pension there was no savings there was there was no financialization of the stock market there was no ability to say who oh, i'll go live on my own uh, you do what you want to do i think that's uh, with the last 30 years of sort of uh sort of financial growth and affluence i think we have for the first time a generation which can actually take a call that we don't want to be a bread uh at this point of time uh so i think that's that's what's sort of uh i would touch upon is so um when james asked me to you know talk about uh, some some of my experiences uh, i noted down two three themes and i was trying to separate the emotional from the rational uh, right and just to give you context so uh, my dada uh, actually passed away even before i was born so i never saw him <laughs> my dadi uh, you know used to live in sirohi it's a small town in rajasthan and we grew up in jaipur and i have you know faint memories of her you know coming and staying with us but you know she would not be she would not be happy uh, because you know it was not her home but there were economic reasons why <laughs> had to come and stay on the other hand uh my nana actually lived up to the ripe old age of 101 <laughs> and uh, you know in in jodhpur there's a tradition if you die after 100 uh, barat nikalti hai you know you you celebrate you you don't you know uh, mourn you actually celebrate because you've lived a full life 
and till the age of 97 98 he actually used to he so he lived in jodhpur uh, but he would actually come to bombay where my cousins stayed and he would take the flight and you know he would walk and my bhabhi used to tell him ki you know uh, should i pack some parathas for you for the flight and he would say nahi mere ko airline ka food khana hai <laughs> Right? Because that used to be fun for him. And, you know, as, as I was thinking about it, so this is the generation before. Um, if I look at the place where I am the sandwich or whatever, the, the patty, actually things are different. Um, so my father actually passed away more than 20 years back, um, you know, at a relatively young age. And my mom's been living in Jaipur on her own uh, for the last 20 odd years. And, you know, the thing is, she comes to Bombay four to six times a year. I go to Jaipur three to four times a year. Um, and, you know, like Varun, she's fiercely independent. And, you know, the thing is, for the last few years, I've been trying to have the conversation with her to say, you know, now it's time for you to move to Bombay. And, you know, her thing is, no, what will I do? And, you know, how houses in Bombay are matchboxes. Uh, but more importantly, my circle is here. My relationships are in Jaipur. My garden is in Jaipur. What will I do? So it's actually not about anything else, but actually it gives her a sense of identity and purpose. Um, my son is now uh, 20, so he had come home and we had gone to Jaipur to spend some time with her, actually just my son and I. Uh, so we'd gone and uh, I was talking to my son and I said, you know, I've been ha having this conversation with Dadi that she should come uh, and she was also there. And my mom said, no, I don't think I should come, blah, blah, blah. And then my son later tells me that I don't think you should force Dadi. I said, dude, I will not force Dadi, but you know, don't assume that I'm not going to come and stay with you, right? Now, whether I choose to or not, but you know, the the expectation is that he should uh, he should. And <clears throat> I'll tell you the the place where I feel somewhat. Uh, inadequate to have this conversation is, you know, many times loosely I actually say ki I'm the patty in the sandwich. But actually, genuinely, if I think about it, whether it is my kids, whether it is, um, you know, my mom, my my in-laws actually, so it's that's the interesting one. Uh, so uh, my father-in-law moved out of India at the age of 65. So he had lived in India till the age of 65. At the age of 65, uh, he and his wife moved to The Hague uh, and they have been living there for the last 12 years. And actually, I think he's in a much better uh, health because he actually moved to The Hague. So they spend about six months there and six months here. And, uh, you know, one of the things I tell him, ki, you know, Baba, your health is better ho gayi hai because if you're in India, you're in the car in Lalwati. Ki Cycle jana hota hai, so automatically health better. Ho jati hai. So this is, I actually feel blessed, fortunate, and I do feel that, you know, despite everything that people talk about the sandwich generation, I think there is independence, whether it is at the age of 20, whether it's the age of 40, whether it's the age of 60 or 80, people value. And to the extent possible to provide that is there. I'll tell you the one thing that I struggle with, and that is guilt. Because I have seen my father do a set of things, I've seen my mom do a set of things, and therefore I feel guilt. And I'll end uh, on that note. But one other thing. Uh, I think the reason I 
feel that I'm not carrying that share of load is actually because of my wife. So actually, if anyone is the patty in that sandwich, it's actually my wife. Um, because, you know, if I talk to my mom, maybe once in two or three days, my wife literally talks to her every day. And my mom will actually say, you know, I spent more time talking to Neeti than to you. And, you know, my wife also does the same thing for her parents. And, you know, that adds the sense of guilt. <clears throat> um, how many of you have heard the song Cats in the Gradle? Right. And I had actually never paid attention to the lyrics of the song. Never. Um, and, you know, now that I'm good, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So I'll just ask if you can, um, on your phones, just Google Cats in the Cradle <laughs> lyrics. I'm actually going to Just the other day, you came to the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away, and he was talking for I knew it, and as it grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad. You know I'm gonna be like you. And the cats in the cradle and the sea was motion. Hey, the man of motion. That I don't know that you know we'll have a good time then. My son turned in just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball. That come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, I'm not today. I got a lot of generation. I'm gonna be like him, yeah. You know I'm gonna be like him. And the kids in the trail and the seals smoke. I don't know when we'll do it again. You know when it came. Much like a man, I just had this one part. For those who are younger, uh, don't have regrets. Mrs. Godridge? Yeah, so let me begin. Firstly, uh, thank you for arranging this uh, little technical glitches that we've been going through on Zoom. I trust I can be heard by everyone in the room. Just do a thumbs up. Yeah, okay. So what I have been hearing yesterday and today, we are covering seven decades of people uh, on this talk. Varun, I think, is in his 40s a week. I hope I'm right. You're in your 50s. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> and I'm in my 70s, okay? So you can call me the sandwich generation or you can call me a midnight's child. I leave that entirely to you because I straddle that. I straddle that. And while I can appreciate the issues that you have raised, uh, there are certain issues that we faced in the last seven decades. Many of them, uh, I'll just pick up one thing that you said, living with your children. When my daughter was about 20 years old, I used to joke with her that when you move out of the house, I want you to get a three bedroom home or a four bedroom home. One of them is gonna be my bedroom. And they didn't like it at all. They said, why should you come and stay with me? I said, it's my right 
to stay with you. There's nothing else. I'm your mom and I'll always be your mom. On the other hand, my son never had any such conversation with me. But my daughter, even today, and she's 20 years down the line now, so she's 40 plus, she still has a room for me. And she keeps on saying, come and stay with me. You're such fun. And I like that. I want to be a fun person for my children's generation. And my, I was a fun person for my parents' generation. Because when we sat around the dinner table, which was the norm at home, we were a nuclear family. I, my parents have no brothers and sisters. It was just my parents, my brother, and me. And every evening, we all look forward to what we had done that day, whether it was uh, work-wise, some legal matter, accounting matter, or just planning a holiday somewhere. And I think the most important thing, it wasn't a sandwich. It was the ability to communicate with each other across generations. And I can see the people in the audience we have stopped communicating. And the song was very, very revealing. There are many like that, that you want to kick a ball with your parents, but uh, they're just too busy or they just don't have the time or there's some other priority. So I think the fact that, you know, we are able to discuss this today and, you know, it's not just a sandwich. I think I sent a little note out yesterday that, you know, it's not a simple bread and butter and a slice of cucumber anymore. It's got all the mayonnaise and it's got the patty and it's got the tomato and it's got the whole, whole hamburger culture over there. So, you know, you have to be very conscious of that. And I think it comes with a sense of experience and uh, a sense of acceptance. More than acceptance, it's tolerance. Today, people have got too many pressures. Young people have too many pressures. And whether they're good or they're bad, whether they can cope with them or not. But I think if you compartmentalize your way, approach to life, then you will not run yourself completely dry in pulling in this direction, that direction, etc., etc. Whether you have a spousal support or you don't have a spousal support. And I think it's okay to admit that, you know, I'm really pooped. I can't handle this anymore. Will someone please help me? Or can we share this? Because you're asking them not out of uh, anything except love. At the end of the day, you have to love the parents that you have and you have to love the children that you have. And I feel terrible when this nuclear family is just collapsing. Even the nuclear family is collapsing around us. So where are we headed? And career is always there. And I find with uh, male friends that once the retirement comes in, it's a huge shock, guys. The guy doesn't know what to do. And we have our group of friends we have a chit chat, you can call it gossip and all that. But we are interconnected with each other as women very, very strongly. And then you come across a spouse who doesn't even have a hobby. And you say, oh my God, what have I landed up with is, you know, where am I headed? Because you have a social life, we are physically strong, we are well maintained, we have a large circle of friends. And then you sometimes feel, I'm dragging him along. Let him be where he wants. <laughs> That's not correct either. So it's not only in-laws. You have to take care of your spouse's needs. After all, he has been a breadwinner for a long time. You may have also been a breadwinner. But somehow there's a balance, more balanced uh, approach. And both of you all are men who presented your cases. And we need to have that little balance in our life male or female. Gender is important. There is no doubt about it. We never ever talked about gender till 20 years ago. Suddenly gender has become a big thing. It's nothing new. There are males and there are females. There's acceptance and there's non-acceptance. Now you have to choose which will make you happy. 
You don't be, have to be just a slice of cucumber. You can add all the mayonnaise if you want. No problem at all. But it's important, you know, that after career, after looking after your health, what about the technical support our parents need? I mean, mine are long since dead, but when the mobile came out, I said, Dad, why do you want a mobile? He said, I'd like to call the kitchen. I said, there's an intercom for you to do that. You don't need a mobile. But you know, that technical uh, despair sometimes that they face is something we really need to handle. And mind you, our children have to be very patient with, very patient with me also. And don't give me this nonsense of yours. I've taught you everything I possibly knew and much, 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 much more. I read more. I'm more aware about things that are happening. I can have a discussion with you. What happened at the end of the Second World War? What happened to Mussolini? What happened to Hitler? Where is your general knowledge? Where is your ability to communicate with your children? You have to keep abreast of many, many things in this world. And there's a complete bombardment of... Uh, information at us and some of it is true some of it is fake so one has to tread extremely extremely uh, lightly and uh, you have to show a lot of flexibility elderly care Karun you mentioned about elderly care it's so professional today it was it's not just domestic health taking care of your parents whichever part of the world they may live in but it's so, so very important, you know, because this, it's a responsibility. Even for a caregiver who's a paid caregiver, it's a responsibility. But that emotional burden finally rests with you. So you cannot give it up. It is not possible. It is 100% unacceptable, at least in my point of view. Financial, of course, is a big, big, responsibility, whichever strata of society you come in, there, there are, you know, the, the money is always an issue, depending on how you want to educate your children, which university they want to go to, then if, are there loans to be repaid? Are you going to take those loans? Are they going to take the loans? And I mentioned yesterday that, you know, in 2007, when the the crash took place and we were about to retire. We were really, you know, said, okay, now we can enjoy club life. We can enjoy traveling with our group of friends. And suddenly many friends of mine, Indian origin, who have opted to live in US or Australia, suddenly came back. We can't come, we can't travel, we can't do the school reunion. I said, what's happening? The kids have come back to stay with us. They just cannot afford to live on their own, rear their children, educate their children. They're back. I said, what? It was very hard for many of us to accept because everything that you had prepared for was out of the window. You had to look at life very, very differently because you had to provide that financial stability which you had been giving all along. You know that there was no question of anything. You had to focus on your children. There was no empty nest. They were back with you. And you had to just hold them together. Our parents may have still been around then for some of us. In my case, my mother was still around. And when she heard these stories, she said, you've got to support your friends. You've just got to support your friends. We'll take care of each other. And, you know, it, it, it brought in a huge family feeling of, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, of when young friends decided to immigrate. You know, your father went to The Hague recently, but he's a very, very unusual situation. Many parents just can't. I mean, maybe you have, he has a daughter or a son living in The Hague or some family member there for support, which maybe you didn't share with us. But it's, it's tough, and I'm not going to... Uh, say anything more except that it's a balance it's a work-life balance it's a gender balance it's a and you know at the end of the day I just find something don't get angry with anyone you don't have to get angry as a matter of fact I think if we can show a little sense of humor to the elderly 
and a little sense of humor to the young, life doesn't have to be so serious. And then, you know, we can progress in a healthier way forward. Thank you. Just um, one one last thing. I when I was hearing Mrs. Godridge speak, I think the one thing which is there is the what she talked about balance. And you know, I think uh, sharing what you do, you know, with with my mom, with my in laws, with my kids. I think that has made a huge difference because. I think many times it is left unsaid uh, as to what is there and what is not there. Just having that communication and you know trying to strike a balance has made a huge difference, at least for me. And the other thing is, um, and you know, some of my friends get completely surprised. You know, everybody has this perception of BCG being like a extremely tough place to work, and you, you work twenty four seven or equivalent. Twenty six years at BCG, I have never missed a single birthday, a single anniversary, a single sports day. Uh, because, you know, there were some things which you have to show up for. And, you know, you have to be very clear. as, And it was clear to me as to what the non-negotiables were. Maybe it's different for other people. But I think just having clarity on what is non-negotiable and what is it that is, I, I think that really made has made a difference. I'll add one quick thing before we go on. But Mrs. Gordridge, when you were speaking, two things uh, struck me. One is your friends and their 2007 crisis and the kids moving back in. So a uh, conversation my wife and I have is, so our kids have grown up, they're in grad programs, they're kind of self-sufficient. Are we really empty nesters? And we've been thinking about this phrase. And she said, no, 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 we have to start planning for when they move back. I said, what? what? <laughs> and I said, no, no, they're not stable yet. So the idea of like, are you stable or on your own is still like, it used to be for us, like, yeah, you're done. So you're, you're set. You're on your own. Now it's like a decade or so away. So that's also now become part of our financial planning, right? How do we think about that moment when we may need to support? The other side is psychological support. Now, my father passed away, so I didn't see the evolution of that relationship. I'm seeing it in my in-laws. And Mrs. Goddard, you mentioned this, right? Like when retired, coming back. And I'm seeing that, you know, my wife is, struggles with this. The relationship between uh, my in my two in-laws are like, it's like all over the map, right? So she's not used to it. Like, what are you doing here? I can't believe. And so as they're aging, their relationship needs psychological support from us. So that's also something we've been talking about and planning for. So this thing about being in the middle, like you, you're getting it on many different dimensions. But we wanted to open it up and hear your experiences. I mean, this is I this the purpose of a master class is to share experiences and from that just learn about how to get ready and prepare ourselves from you know any side of the bread or patty. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm very much the fat patty. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, uh, and hopefully a very delicious one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Um, so um, I chose to be the patty. I mean, in the sense is, of course, the children were there young. I was working and um, a, a very uh, demanding work situation. We were a nuclear family and uh, parents, parents who had been unwell for long. My mother was bedridden for 17 years, um, dad for the last four or five years of his life. Um, but I chose to take care of my parents, though my brother was there and he was a primary caregiver. But I think um, all their hospitalizations, um, the emotional support that they both needed, um, I would visit my parents at least twice a week. I mean, they were in Noida and in Delhi uh, with a full-time job. I would still do it at least twice a week. Um, and then, of course, um, taking care of two young boys. Um, but as I, as I mentioned, I willingly did both. Um, and... Um, I, I don't know, James, what we are planning to do or what we would do. Uh, we are in the frame of mind what your friends are, opposite of what you said, probably, you know, just be on our own. And we use this word sometimes, not burden our children. I don't know if that's the right word. That's what Varun, your market research. 
for a number of reasons. So what the art market is just said is Varun Mike. Varun Mike. Thank you. So our research says people feel guilt on both sides. Okay, Sanish. So one, you feel guilt that you have not done right by your parents, not given them enough time, given them enough support, given them enough care. And second, you feel guilt that, oh, I I need to uh, push my children also uh, to an extent where they also have lives. And so uh, people feel guilt more than both sides. So I would have, I use the word burden, but there is a lot of guilt uh, that uh, comes along uh, in this uh, because and uh, one just one point you know sometimes also and what we have realized with seniors and senior care seniors don't want to be taken care of okay so you can feel all the guilt that you want uh, but one of the things that is human nature like think about it uh, will you like to be taken care of uh, I, it, it just in my head it doesn't come to me that I want to be taken care of and if my children feel like your son and daughter feel guilt that they didn't take care of me it'll be I'll be feel more guilty in that regard so I think there's no no I'm, I'm I, I, emo, emotional care psychological care uh, whatever we are researchers okay so like in this, in biologically, we are wired to take care of our children. It's like, it's it's how we, if we have evolved, it's, it's and it's animal instinct, right? Uh, across the board. You never see, you see a mother tiger taking care of cubs. You never see a, you know, a tiger having aging uh, tigers being taken care of. It, it just doesn't happen. It's 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 the o- it's the only biological wiring we have. Uh, everything else is cultural conditioning. Uh, it, 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 everything else is cultural conditioning. Uh, so, 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 and there to me in our research that becomes a little bit of uh, conflict. Like most people, when we we sell what we call active adult communities, mostly active senior living in your, in your look. And uh, most people ask me, are the kids buying for their parents? And 99% of the times, kids are the biggest problem because they are thinking ki dunya kya they have this, uh, this, this, this social stigma and, and, the, and the parents who don't buy so many times, I see parents who buy and then cancel they really want to have an independent life, but they get worried about what people will think of their uh, children, and they don't want to go through that guilt. If uh, that's the way we put it, that's so. That's that's what we have seen. But again, so like uh, my part of the business, what we will do remain 0.0001 percent of the world. Most w- most people will, according to me, will choose what like Abik's uh, mom does. Is like I will live in my own house on my own. We'll talk to you. Uh, like your parents also you said right they live in a separate home uh, on that so that's that's at least what's what our research is showing uh, or sort of market participation Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I, you know, completely echo everything you just said and I just want to share what happens in my home. Um, I, I lost my mom a couple of years ago. As a result, I've become deeply insecure and anxious about my father. And I, uh, my, my parents' home is in Kolkata and I live in Delhi. And my dad wants to live his life in Kolkata like he's always lived. And I, uh, you know, I burden him with my anxiety and my insecurity. And I actually force him to come and, and live with us in Delhi, uh, which he caters to because of my emotional needs, not because he wants it or he needs it. Uh, So there's the other side of it as well, where I I guess parents sometimes cater to children to to support them in their emotional needs, but not really want to be part of their household. Yeah, and we're going to keep going. I just want to give everybody an option. We were supposed to go to a place called the residency for the tour. It's completely optional, but if you do want to go, the buses will leave at 4.30. I, I'm, I'm going to stay and continue the conversation. Uh, but if you're going to skip that and just going to go for dinner, the second bus leaves at 6.30. Okay, just some logistics. Sorry. So, yeah, I just wanted to um, 
in a way i don't agree with you varun when you when the when you said that parents don't need to be taken care of they do after a certain point it's all about emotions and you know you as kids we don't need to spend money but you the fact that you are around that is also a lot you you say good morning in the morning and you say good night in the night that's also enough but i'm going to add another angle to it uh, my parents are old and um, and so is my husband's mother who was very old the decision which he had to make at one point does he not take her to the hospital because she was 92 plus that's such a difficult decision to take and as children i mean lots of you are very young and may you never make this decision but that i think is the most difficult decision to make as a child when the option is that you know you have to be doing something but their body is asking that's it it's enough but you want to do because you are the child you are also very greedy you want the body around all the time it's very difficult and with my father we had to take that decision and it's tough so i echo that uh, i had my father uh, and this is my son is born uh, my son is born and my father is on a ventilator uh, at the hospital and uh, we knew that you know the, the all the hospital was doing was basically stringing uh, the inevitable along and uh, we had to make the decision of getting him uh, getting him home uh, we wanted him to be home then he came home and he stayed home for another 15 odd days uh, he passed away and uh, yeah you, you're just not prepared for those decisions so i think probably i i think those are some decisions some of us will have to go through Uh, yeah in my uh, case as well uh, my mom and both my parents you know they always lived you know as you rightly said in their own house they would never come back and then my dad died yeah so both my both my parents uh, they lived by themselves they wouldn't come and live with us there was no need to uh, but then my dad had cancer and um, he died and after that my mom moved to a smaller house you know a single bedroom house but she would live by herself and then during covid times she fell sick and uh, her heart got complicated whatever you know then we kind of she finally accepted to come move into my house and then the whole of covid period she was there in my house and eventually there was a time when she was very sick and she refused she said i'm going back home right she wanted to go back to her own home and she lived there for a few days two or three days and then she passed away the point is you're right you know they don't like to be helped if it's possible i would say and i would like to say to be... I, i i just on this i would say in our research the correct word is we the moment we use the word they we somehow other this uh, think all of us don't like to be helped that's uh, that's the only thing i would like to put in a different perspective what my mom says to me so uh, they don't want uh, me to take care of them because they my mom sees me busy you know she says you don't have time for yourself uh, you are always busy back then my parents were able to take care of their parents because she says like we only had work for 8 hours a day the rest of the time we would spend with children or with the parents but now you work 16 hours a day or you you are struggling yourself so that's one more perspective why they don't want to be taken care because they think that they would be burden for us or, or for the party yeah so i'd like to bring a new uh, dimension to the conversation so i'm a party with one slice of bread so um of course my um, grandparents uh, all of them genetically blessed uh, blessed so they all lived uh, late into 80s and early 90s and mid 90s i see my parents who are active um the thanks to my mom who's a naturopath 
takes care of the health of the family. Uh, I need to ensure that both of them are mentally active and there's something to do all throughout. Uh, that's wonderful and I'm sure that uh, we'll take care of uh, them as and when needed. But there is also the other side of the bread, which is missing. So I don't have kids. So there will at some point in time be when probably three, four decades down the line, hopefully more, um, probably need to understand as to what would I be staring at? Would it be the Jarvis along with the humanoids or the exoskeletons? Or would there be a system in place that uh, comes and kicks in? I don't know. <laughs> of course. I, I want to leave for the bus. So I'll you. just, if I can go ahead. make my point before that. Uh, so I missed most of the conversation thanks to finding my phone, which had misplaced somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, two things which I wanted to place before all of you. One is that um, we stay in a place in Bangalore, my husband and I, which is on the outskirts, um, closer to the Bangalore airport, but we sort of moved back center town, uh, though it's a lot more crowded, etc. It's a flat as opposed to this thing, but because my mother's with us, my mother-in-law was also with us, but she we lost her some years back. And I see the joy on my mother's face um, being close to her siblings as opposed to, let's say, just us. Um, and I, I just feel that she's so busy. She's, you know, that, that, that joy is kind of incompensatable, no matter how much I give my time or my husband who's close to her does. The second point is a very interesting exercise when my grandmother, uh, Padmini, about whom I used to blog a lot, we, she lived two months short of 100. She almost lived up to 100 years. And I could document many of the parts of, of her uh, so seemingly ordinary housewife journey, but as a matriarch of a huge joint family in Chennai. And what I did was during COVID, um, though my son got to see the grandmother, my niece nephews also did, uh, but I would daily do the evening walk with my son, telling her, telling him, uh, Anirudh, about grandmother. For him, for him it's great grandmother. Um, because a lot of times it'd be so, you know, my niece would be like, what six children, like how, and then I say, what are you talking about? Six, somebody had 11 and 12, you know, and it, they find it totally unrelatable. But when I started storifying it, um, and every day on the, on the, this thing, then suddenly my, my son turned around and said, ma, you should, you know what, do a podcast about party. Like, uh, actually seeing, and then I do realize that these new age, seemingly new age tools, um, are really wonderful glues to uh, height, uh, enhance understanding even between family members, even within our own this thing. Like I, I actually put out interviews with the elders in my family, like my grand aunt. Mm -hmm. I go to Chennai interview, and then I put out in the family WhatsApp group along with her. Picture. It, it just you know like so many people say that okay we didn't even know about this. You now how they got married without even seeing each other. So I just felt that. Uh, as a sandwich generation, I think we also have to be this storytelling generation. Thank you. So maybe very, very quickly. Um, so my parents, both my parents passed over the last five months. Um, and my role really there was to be the emotional caregiver because mom was fiercely independent and said, there's no question, you know, I'm living in my home up to my last breath. And I think that kept her just so active and so purposeful. And on the other hand, I contrast it with, you know, my mom-in-law, we lost my father-in-law about 10 or 12 years ago. My husband being the only child, you know, operated from that place of guilt and said, no, you have to move in with us. And I just see the difference in terms of just purpose to life and the joy of life, because I think independence gives a lot of purpose. So I think as children, we need to be cognizant of the fact that we don't lay guilt on our parents so that they come and live with us. Because, you know, like you said, um, we all want to be independent. And we have one daughter. And as I think of, you know, us getting older, I wouldn't like to live with her. I'd love for her to be in, in my world, but I definitely want to live on my own. So... I think it is about independence. <laughs> not only, not only it's fiercely independence. It it actually keeps them very agile. They they you know, 
they're running their own households, they're doing their uh, staff and all. So I think from that point of view, mentally, they're very alert if they're on their own. But there comes a point, you have to step in. I strongly feel that. And when you say, like, step in and step in and like no. take decisions for them? Is no, that, no, 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 just, just cafold them. Just, you know, there will be times my mother will forget 10 times and just, just, just be there, say, it's okay. You tell her the 11th time, that's fine. That's how it goes. But there comes a time that will happen and you necessarily don't have to pluck them out of their space, but be there emotionally. Physically, yes, that's really important, but emotion, two phone calls, three phone calls if you're living apart, it works. Yeah, so we struggle with this independence thing because we're coming close to the point where we'll have to make a decision for them. We can't, they, despite their protestations, they cannot live on their own. We're not there yet, but we're coming but, close. Yeah. So that's the question I asked. Yeah. Like, is there a point at which you have to step in and say, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't take this call? Unfortunately, James, that, that decision would happen when when one partner is gone. That's the that's the decision. That's the time when the decision automatically happens. Still they're together. It's beautiful. They really don't need anybody. But it's it's when the one who's left, that person needs. And that is again, that's a guilt, a burden into thousand times, whatever you say. That's the time and you have to just step in. So, yeah, I, I'm very, ang uh, I'm 23, so I don't know how uh, I will contribute to this conversation, but yes. You're the bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the bread. Yeah, you're not the patty yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but maybe I still have some thoughts on it. And uh, uh, so I really, really love to be the patty. Uh, I, I kind of dream being the patty. So I, I'd say um, uh, for me, my parents uh, don't have a very happy marriage. And um, uh, my mom and my dad have like a 20 years difference. So he's around 65 now. And um, uh, when I was like very, very uh, young, like five or six years old, uh, he, he got a heart attack and we had an open heart surgery. And he, he stopped working when I was like nine, nine years old. So I have an younger sister and my mom, uh, she, 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 she's not educated. She couldn't work anywhere. So her whole time was taking care of him. So still they didn't have a happy marriage. And uh, there was a lot of trauma and uh, like, um, uh, like still it is. And there was a lot of uh, domestic um, emotional abuse. But still, I really, really uh, wanted to be a daughter like I mean I wanted a parenting and they didn't know how to parent me and my sister they had a lot of emotional baggages with their own personal lives that they weren't able to spend time for each other and um, and I keep telling them even though they understand that I want to you know I want to do certain things for them I want to take care of them and we didn't have any relatives or uh, we didn't have any grandparents so I really wish if there was uh, like at least uh, you know, families like you, at least a neighbor, like uh, someone we knew, they would at least had some perspective change and they would, they would at least try to replicate what others do. So I kind of rose up to the occasion and I'm really glad that this, this desire that I have to be the party was not affected at all. So I even keep thinking that I even want to, you know, adopt some Brits, like adopt some parents in the future, like, like old people who wanted a party and I wanted to be a party for someone. Um, yeah, so yeah, that, that, that is, that, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, uh, I understand uh, uh, this need to be independent is slightly different. Uh, I, in my parents' case, what I saw is that uh, uh, we felt or we learned that uh, they actually wanted to be relevant. They wanted to continue to be relevant. So, um, and they probably feared that they would lose that relevance if they come and stayed with us. So we uh, were constantly negotiating uh, with them. And then but the tipping point was the COVID uh, thing. Uh, when uh, the town was announced as the red zone, uh, we immediately grabbed them. It was like a, a special operations thing. Overnight, uh, the parents were just packed and then brought in with the entire luggage. Um, 
but i think we also took our time as to what we needed to do we wanted to uh, make them feel independent in the sense that we wanted to make them uh, feel relevant give them give them a function within the village and uh, uh, my mother continues to be uh, the chief of r&d in food uh, there in the village she she gets to work with all the women there and she has a fantastic time uh, we saw my grandmother and my father pass away in the community and uh, uh, for the first time i mean when uh, ms godrej was talking about uh, friends as being an asset i realized uh, that is the biggest uh, strength uh, that that we can share with the parents and it's not about we have to take care of our parents i think it's awesome to take care of our parents uh, it's 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 really beautiful any yeah. oh yeah okay so i have a strange uh, situation you know with my parents gone now i have a 27 year old and a 22 year old and i don't think they are going <laughs> <laughs> i bought another house and no they don't want to go <laughs> you're making it too comfortable <laughs> thank you um okay so uh i think my situation is that of a club sandwich because <laughs> mostly you've seen generations where in india you call it you call them joint family then go into nuclear family for us it has been from nuclear family becoming a joint family again so i live with uh we've not we we live with my mum and ishan's parents all of them in the same house um things did change because of covid and we moved ishan's parents in my mom was with us uh, ishan's parents in during covid and they gladly joined in um no resistance we thought there would be because you know everybody they have their home and their life and they're all settled but i think home is where they're most comfortable and if they have company rather than being alone so for them i think home is us we might not have a lot of time that we get to spend with them because both of us are very busy people but even if it's about 10 15 minutes every day and i'm saying 10 15 minutes like we don't even maybe share meals together because our timings are different but those 10 15 minutes of just going and sitting with auntie and getting all the family goss <laughs> all that more uh, i think that has really changed them and when two people are living alone and when we'd go visit them for a sunday lunch you know in 5 minutes there's an argument that starts <laughs> between the two but when they're with us and in a family with a lot more people and my mom and my uh, and my mother in law they get along really well um then things are different they have more people rather than bickering between two people they have more people to talk to a uh, more comfortable life uh, kids around i might not want that with my own children i'd want to be an empty nester with their rooms intact they can come back anytime they want but i think the situation for me with our parents has been different so yeah a club sandwich <laughs> you know i was just wondering if um, maybe i joined a few minutes late i was wondering was there any um, uh, example or articulation around part of the sandwich that's just exhausted with their set of parents or caregiving or just managing the circus of having two little children and three or four adults and then having to just deal with this whole thing i was just curious i mean by the time i came in i only got the other side so i was just wondering no we were all exhausted <laughs> no we have we haven't talked about that it's good yeah she kind of touched it but she i mean i i would i would like to admit you know like it was tough for us it was tough because you know covid lockdown was very very long and my mom had you know uh, she broke a hip you know she had a heart condition then she broke a hip and uh, uh, then you know so we also had another uncle at home uh, who also had to be brought home so it was tough right it was very very tough up to a particular point because you couldn't get any kind of help and um 
tough. How would I say it was tough? Uh, yes, you know, you and under no circumstances you want to deny anything or you know show that it's difficult. But I'm saying the truth. You know, it was very very difficult. Um, home became very very quiet. Uh, it it was absolutely you know because no no you couldn't get any kind of help from anywhere and uh, you're not you know you don't, they, they, there are no doctors you know you're not a physician and you don't know how to deal with things uh, so we went through that phase a very difficult phase thank you you know uh, my brother is the primary caretaker. And I'm obviously the emotional one now for the past seven years. But you know the point you brought in? It, 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 exhaustion does set in. They also have to have their holidays uh, and their life also has to go in. So between siblings, if there's an understanding, so I go and then they can go for the holidays and vice versa. But I really wonder if it's a single child, it can become tough and you do not perhaps get a break as you would want or carry on with your life, travel. So much happens when you have smaller children. Another thing I want to just flag it is technology. I mean, Firoza mentioned technology, but I'm just like in hospital, now when you go in, you have so much online stuff to do. I can't see my dad doing that. I just cannot see my dad doing that or my mother. My mother, most definitely not. So again, as we would get older, Perhaps when we are the, I don't know, sandwich top slice or the bottom slice, there has to be somebody to do the technology bit also. <laughs> That's a deal. Yeah, I don't know if anybody faced challenges with their parents of not filling in forms online, not, you know, everything is online now. So, yeah. Hey, Varun, I had a question for you, and then maybe we'll do a quick wrap, wrap up. Uh, when you think about infrastructure and building for this generation, uh, other than the physical infrastructure, are, is there also like medical facilities, banking systems like that cater specifically to this to take the burden down on those, you know, because the okay. structure is not set up for that support. Yeah, so, uh, but we don't do as much on the assisted care. We do think through medical, but I think the primary thing, like I think we should think about is actually companionship. And there was a word used relevance. Uh, so provide the infrastructure to people to stay relevant. So whether through its activity, so like in our projects, like one lady took up art after like when she was like 70. And then if you could organize an art show for her, where she exhibited artwork, that makes a big, much larger difference uh, for people, those kind of things. So I think, uh, uh, so what we, and when we get older, I think the thing we need the most and what Navita was pointing to is actually time from other people, from our children. The, the thing we we really, what we don't want is care. We don't want physical care, emotional care. We just want actually uh, presence and time, uh, which is the biggest challenge with the busy lives, with our work, with our children uh, and that. So I think uh, a lot of things that we need to do is to build the infrastructure for people to be able to spend time constructively. So the medical piece, I think, is the easier piece which will get fit in. I think it's 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 the infrastructure for people to stay relevant, which will be the more, uh, I think, uh, difficult piece to do. I think. Uh, so, so I think. Thank you, Mrs. You know, with infrastructure, I mean, I'm speaking from Bombay point of view, so NCPA, right? Now, largest population which comes to attend those particular programs are senior citizens. And just a couple of years ago, there were huge concerts. And I, what I saw is they have two flights of stairs to get in. They have now uh, put those, uh, I don't know what you call them, but those chair trolleys on the... Chairlift. 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 I thought that was brilliant. I mean, that should be part of every infrastructure. Cities war, the cities and institutions are built by these people who now need assistance. So I think this should be part of the infrastructure per se. Ms. Godridge, any final words? Well, this has been a very interesting journey, James. I'm really delighted that we selected this uh, topic because we we are aware of it, but we don't necessarily have this sort of luxury of time to discuss it and see so many different different points of view 
And I think at whatever age, whatever age, the work-life balance for senior citizens, for working family, working members of a family, for young children as well, this work-life balance sometime and a lot of time for fun things. I think we seem to be burdened with work, work, work. But if we could spare a little time, not just an organized holiday, but every evening, put aside a little time, because just what you talk, uh, this recording of stories is a wonderful idea. We have it at the museum. And I cannot tell you how important it's become. Every grandmother, grandfather wants to come on Saturday morning and tell you their stories. And the children are so eager because sometimes they don't have grandparents living in the same city as them. So I think the storytelling sends across a multitude of messages to all generations. And we have to keep that up. We just have to keep it up because, you know, the hotline to mom and dad will remain until the umbilical cord goes. But you have to have the hotline to your children as well. Uh, we covered a lot of lot of ground. That's okay. Oh, good. Now it works. <laughs> uh, so uh, we we covered a lot of ground from uh, financial, uh, emotional, the psychological support, the relevance support, infrastructure. It just feels like we have to be thinking and planning differently than probably our parents ever had to, and actually with much greater resources than our parents ever had, and. Maybe that's adding a new level of stress to it, but uh, it feels like uh, we've all been doing it on our own, you know, in our own ways. And uh, there's something about coming together and sharing that experience that just maybe allows us to do this in community. And certainly that's what you're trying to do from a business perspective. Uh, but I think there's a great value in that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good deliberation tomorrow and later in the evening as well. Thank you. Thank you. We've missed the residency, unless uh, you want to take a thing. Or And I think 6.30, we'll have the next bus to dinner. Yes. Enjoy. I'm really missing Lucknow. I was so looking forward to Lucknow. Thank you, technical team. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm leaving, huh?